Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome to Boys and Girls Club on the Go. Miss J here. Yes. Miss Sergio here, and um, we have a few special guests today. We, we do. Miss Danielle from University Terrace. Hi, guys. And we also have Miss Brashear. Hi, from guys. Wildwood. Hi. Hi. So we have some re a really exciting activity planned for y'all today. I would personally say that it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's very cool. Especially for a really hot day, kind of like today. Absolutely. It's a great thing to do. Absolutely. So as always, you want to check with your parent or guardian to make sure it's safe for you to be on Facebook Live. Remember not to share any personal information, um, like your name and age. If your parent shares that information, that is okay. And um, so if you're with your parent or you have their permission, you can let us know which site you attend or mm -hmm. where you're from, so city or state, just don't um, tell us your names. Absolutely, and of course, we want to give you all shout outs, so please, please, please drop some comments below. Um, as always, safety is always important, but we want to make sure we're being especially safe around these times. So we're gonna go over five tips that you can use to ensure that you're being as safe as possible. The first thing is remember to always wash your hands. Um, washing your hands for at least 20 seconds will ensure that you are keeping all those germs away. If you don't have access to hand washing, hand sanitizer is also a great alternative. So the next thing is if you um, need to sneeze or cough, make mm -hmm. sure that you use your elbow to cover your mouth and that you move away. So think of it as a little dab and um, you wanna make sure that you wash your hands or that you use hand sanitizer after that. Absolutely. Our next thing, we want to make sure that we do not touch our face. It's so easy to just touch your face if you're scratching your nose or if you're fixing your glasses, but touching your face is the easiest way for germs to get into your mouth, nose, and eyes. So if you have to do that, be sure to wash your hands beforehand. Another thing is we definitely want to practice social distancing, mm -hmm. so make sure that you try to keep six feet away from someone. And again, if you see your friend, don't give them a high five, but you can um, bump elbows or um, things like that. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, if you feel sick, definitely tell an adult. We want to make sure that you are as safe as, and as healthy as possible. So if you just don't feel right, let them know. All right, I think it's time to move on to Harambe. All right, awesome. So if you guys have been joining us, you are familiar with Harambe and you know how it goes. So mm -hmm. if you're watching along, um, you can do it along with us. Um, so today's Thursday, so it's Thursday, Thursday and Harambe. Harambe. BGC is in the house, say what is Thursday and Harambe. BGC is in the house, say what? All right, so, awesome. Yeah, now we're gonna do one of my personal favorites. It's Boom Chicka Boom. So, who wants to start it off for us today? Any of our guests? You said it was your favorite. So. I'll start okay. it off. <laughs> I said a boom, chicka boom. I said a boom, chicka boom. I said a boom, boom, chicka boom. I said a boom, boom, chicka boom. I said a boom, chicka rocka, chicka rocka, chicka boom. I said a boom, chicka rocka, chicka rocka, chicka boom. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna do it. Now we're gonna do it. Nobody's way. Nobody's, Nobody's way. way. So as always, Harambe is a great thing that you can do with your family and friends. It can get you up and get you moving. And if you want a little bit more um, activity, check out yesterday's video for Wellness Wednesday. I did aerobics with Miss TK. We had a great time, and it's sure to get you sweating. I saw that. It was really awesome. Great thank job. you. Thank you. So now let's move on into our super cool activity. Okay. So again, you guys, if you're watching, make sure that you comment below and let us know um, who's watching at what site or where you guys are from, and we'll give you guys a shout out. So today we are going to do a food science activity and make ice cream. Woo! Very exciting, and like Mr. Sergio said, it's so hot today, so this is something that's really awesome that you can do from home. So let's go over the materials that you will need for this activity. First, you will need a gallon Ziploc bag. And this is something very simple that you can find at the grocery store. You can ask your parent if there are any um, in your home, but a gallon Ziploc bag, and it has to snap at the top. Second, you will need a quart size sandwich bag. Again, just something small 
that will let's get closer so we can see something small that will zip at the top and keep those ingredients fresh for you next you will need sugar regular plain sugar is just fine next we will need vanilla vanilla is something that you can find in your baking aisle um, you can ask your parent or guardian if there's any next you will need ice cream salt which may also be considered rock salt if you don't have access to the salt um, this type of salt you can also use regular table salt last but certainly not least you will need milk so um, you can use half and half milk however if you are um, have different dietary restrictions and have different preferences you can use coconut milk which is what we have here you can also use almond milk um, you can use soy milk any sort of milk that's your preference so are we ready to get started I think so all righty so First, before we get started, let's think of some questions that we may have about this science project. So, a sheet of paper for everyone. Thank you, Ms. Danielle, for handing out the utensils. Of course. And um, as we just went over, we want to make sure that we either wash our hands or use hand sanitizer right before we start touching any of the ingredients. So what are some things that y'all want to observe while we are doing this experiment? I definitely want to observe the temperature of the ice to see if it gets colder or to see if it melts quicker than ice usually would. So I'm going to write that down as my observation question. I want to see how thick the ice cream is going to get. That's a really great observation. Um, I'm with Ms. Brashear on that one, so I want to see how the consistency changes, and um, I did this a long time ago, and I haven't done it in a long time, so I really don't remember what it, um, how it turned out, but I'm definitely interested in seeing how, how much it looks like real ice cream. Um, I think I'm just going to go for the straightforward one. Is it good? So I want to know what it tastes like, mm -hmm. so that's going to be mine. I'm also really curious to see how long will it take for the ice cream to yes, become true. ice cream. So how about we all take guesses? And at home, you can take guesses as well. How long do you think it will take for the ice cream, to, for the ingredients to actually become ice cream? I think that it will take seven minutes. What do y'all think? Mm, maybe five if you're a really fast shaker. Okay, five minutes. What about you, Miss Danielle? I'm going for a longer time, 15 minutes. Ooh. Um, I'll go in between that, so I'll say around 10 minutes. And if you guys um, want to let us know how long you think it'll take, let us know in the comments, and we'll see who's right. And we'll Absolutely. give you guys a shout out. Absolutely. So now we will start to put our ingredients together. Okay, so first, thank you. Oh, one ingredient that you will definitely need that we forgot to mention at the beginning is ice. The ice, of course, is very cold and it will help to freeze your um, ice cream. Okay, the measuring cup as well. Okay, and the measuring cup as well. So first, in our bag, and definitely ask for a parent or guardian to assist you with this activity if you need it. First, in our bag, let's add our sugar. And if you, again, have any dietary restrictions, you can use alternative sugars, or you can use more or less if necessary. So first, we will add two tablespoons of sugar. So we can add that just with the cup here. Okay. 
measured out and pour it in your small bag. Sugar in the small bag. I'll come closer a little bit so you all can see. You're gonna put your sugar in your small bag, about two tablespoons. Mm -hmm. So it should equal a little corner of your bag. So we'll make a triangle in your bag. So next, we will add in a half of a tablespoon, of a half of a teaspoon of vanilla. Now, I personally really like vanilla, so I may go for a whole teaspoon. So um, in case some people don't have vanilla extract or they have anything else, is there anything else that you would recommend that they use? Absolutely. So if you don't have vanilla, there's also an almond e extract. Cool. Um, or if you don't like the vanilla flavor at all, you can easily just you know use the sugar and that'll sweeten it as well. I would say another thing that I think a lot of people have at home would be like if you have syrup that you use for like your mm -hmm. waffles or pancakes, that would be a good way. Ooh, that sounds good. Mm-hmm. Maybe some like Nutella, maybe. Oh yeah, like absolutely. Yeah. If you don't have a measuring spoon, you can use the cap to your vanilla, and that's about a tablespoon. I mean, a teaspoon. Oh, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Thanks for the tip. Very great observation, Mr. Sheer. Thank you. And what does the vanilla do? What does the vanilla extract do to this? The vanilla extract adds vanilla flavor. So if you've ever had regular vanilla ice cream, if you've ever had vanilla cake, um, anything like that, it adds a nice flavor. And vanilla is actually a plant. So um, it comes from that after the plant is dried, um, the vanilla flavoring is extracted from that. So, so it should look something like this mm -hmm. right now. All right, and next we will add in our milk, which I may need a spoon. For any, so does anyone want to use the half and half? Okay, so next we will add in a half of a cup of milk. So I'm like, I'm gonna go get a spoon for the coconut. Okay. Does everybody else want to use the coconut? Yeah, I want to try and see if it changes the flavor up or anything like that. I wonder if it's going to change the consistency since it's thick. Oh, yeah. I wonder if that'll make a difference, too, you know, depending on the thickness. Yeah, so with the vanilla flavoring, you can change it to, you know, different flavoring. And just another side note, coconut milk, um, if you are vegan, so you don't eat any meat or fish, um, you can go ahead and use coconut milk, and it's vegan. So this is my bag with the coconut milk. Now, once you have those ingredients in your bag, just close the top, make sure it's sealed really, really well. 
and just give it a little shape. That way all of your ingredients can be mixed well, but of course we're going to do a lot of shaking later. safety if you like your bag likely won't come open um, however for safety you can double bag just to be sure So now we will move on to our next step. We have our large gallon bags and we are going to fill them about halfway with ice. Just regular ice that you'll find in your freezer. Um, let's see. Make sure all your ingredients in your small bag are very mixed up. If you have to do like that a little bit to get them, get sugar mixed up with the vanilla and the milk. Okay, so we have a big bag of ice here for all of us to share. Okay. Girl, oh, actually, I'm gonna just yeah, scoop it. Do you want to just put it in your oh, oh yeah. In there? Okay. All right, that's good. So my bag is filled about. Halfway with ice. And now we are going to add in our salt. We will add in a half a cup of salt. If you do not have ice cream salt or rock salt at home, regular table salt will work. And why do we need salt in our ice? Oh, that's a great question. The salt, we'll actually answer that later. We'll go over our questions. So think about that. What and if, salt is doing while you're doing it. And if you really want to experiment, you can also um, try to make the ice cream without the salt included and with the ice, just to see what your reaction may be and how different it is. So as you can see, um, the coconut milk made it a little different, made the color a little bit different. So um, I think Miss Danielle slips, um, she used half and half, and hers, just, hers looks a lot milky. This one looks a little bit more watery, but either way is fine. Okay, so now I have put my rock salt inside of my ice, and I think I'm almost ready. I'm gonna wait for the rest of my team to get going. If you are just now joining us, we are doing a food science experiment and making ice cream. So now if you have all of your um, ingredients, so your salt and your ice in this bag, drop your ice cream bag, so the bag with your vanilla, your milk, and your sugar, drop it into your ice bag. And we will seal the gallon bag tightly just by clamping it at the top. Be sure to get as much air out as possible. So you want to make sure that you try to get all the air out of this little bag. So now comes the fun part. We are going to shake our bags. You can build up your muscles. Absolutely. Your arms. 
And if your bag is really, really cold, or if it gets too cold, if your bag is really, really cold, sorry, if your bag is really, really cold, you can use a bandana, which I have here. And I'm just gonna wrap it around my bag. Like so, and Miss Danielle actually has a t-shirt. And this is a great way that you can shake your bag without getting your hands too cold. You can also use anything at home, like a towel um, or a blanket, anything at home. So let's shake. We're starting at 326. Let's see how long it takes. And to make it funner, you can march in place yeah. while you're shaking. I think I'm going to do it just do all kinds of stuff. I think we can make it a bit creative so that we'll have fun shaking. So how about we... Okay, let's go low. And let's go back high. This is a great workout. Let's go in a circle. My hands are getting really cold. Like it's colder than what you started with? Yeah, mine yeah, is definitely. freezing. I definitely feel like my bag is a lot colder than what it was when I first started. Let's keep going. We're almost at our five minute mark, so we'll check and see if Mr. Shear was right. cream that you use, I mean the amount of um, milk that you use that will determine how quickly your ice cream will form. So if you're using one cup, um, it may take a little bit longer in comparison to a half of a cup. So let's keep thinking. Four. <laughs> <laughs> Five. 
Oh wow, you guys, check out Miss Danielle's ice cream. So if you look, it's super squishy, feels like ice cream, looks like ice cream. Do you think maybe um, since you used half and half, that might have made the process go quicker? I think that might have been the difference because mm -hmm. everyone else used coconut milk. Let's check out Miss Rashira's ice cream. Double bag, too. Double bag might have made it a little bit mm -hmm. um, harder, you know, because they were pretty good at cold. But it looks kind of squishy, and I use coconut milk. <laughs> so it's like a slushy. I'm going to shake for the full 10 minutes and I'm going to see if I have like two more minutes to go. Let's see. So first question, the temperature. So would y'all say that it seemed to get cooler as we were shaking? Did it seem like it was getting warmer? What, what, what was your experience? Very cold. It got very cold. Even yeah. though the ice was melting, it got colder and colder. Yeah, I agree. Definitely felt way colder as we were shaking it up some more. Absolutely. I absolutely agree. So um, the next was consistency. Let's check. Let's all check the consistency of our ice cream. So this is mine. I used uh, coconut milk. And as you can see, it's more of like soft serve ice cream. It's not as firm, so maybe if I shake it a little bit longer, maybe an additional five to 10 minutes, maybe I can get a more firm ice cream. And as you saw Miss Danielle's earlier, it was very firm. Mr. Sergio, would you like to show your ice cream? And what did you use? Sergio? So mine's, um, I use uh, coconut milk as well. So uh, mine's kind of like Mr. Lisa's, just, um, it's super wet, so you definitely want to maybe use like a tablecloth or something when you're doing this, but um, it sure looks like ice cream. Okay, and for the shake time, Miss Danielle, how long do you think you um, shook your ice cream for? Um, I think I ended up like shaking closer to your seven minute time. Okay. Um, yeah. What about you, Miss Rashir? Um, basically the same amount. Mm -hmm. Just, I think the difference in milk makes a difference in the consistency. Absolutely. So, Mr. Sergio and I shook for about 10 minutes, and we had the soft serve consistency. So maybe if we shook a little bit longer, um, maybe um, we would have a more firm ice cream. So, next, I think we all are curious about the taste and texture. And if you at home have any questions um, about what we're experiencing with the ice cream, we would definitely love to share them with you. So, how about we give it a shot and taste it? Mm, it smells good. This is really great. What do y'all think? Very good. I even like it like this because it's like a smoothie or a slushy. Mm. The vanilla flavor comes through really strong. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty good. Absolutely. So um, in doing this experiment, you should have definitely seen that your ice cubes were melting um, at a quicker rate and um, it was getting colder. As we all mentioned, it seemed like our hands were literally freezing. That's why we wrapped it up in a napkin or a bandana or a t-shirt or even a bag to help with the shaking. And as the ice was melting, it was actually going below freezing point. So it would even be colder 
than the bag that we had in the cooler. Um, and as a result, we were able to make homemade ice cream. I think that's really cool, you guys. Yeah, excellent. So with the holidays coming up and with the weekend coming up, this is definitely a really cool um, food science activity that you can do with your family, you can do with your friends, or you can even do it by yourself if you're in the mood for a cool, healthy snack. Um, of course, um, to make it even healthier, you can add different, um, or to make it even better, you can add different fruits and you can also um, jazz it up with like Oreos or peanut butter, as Mr. Sergio said earlier, Nutella sounds like a really great idea. Or with your foot. Exactly. So there's so many different things that you can do with this activity. We really hope that you all enjoyed it. Um, I think we all enjoyed it here. We have a nice little um, afternoon dessert. If you need to see more information or if you need to see the ingredients or the materials that we use during this, definitely go back and watch the beginning of the video. It will be saved on our Facebook page and also uploaded to our YouTube page. As always, if you have any questions, definitely reach out to us in the comments or by giving us a call at our office. Um, and we also have the Goose Chase app. If you see it on our Facebook page, it's a really neat app to do a scavenger hunt with your family. There are a lot of really, really cool challenges, challenges and activities, and it actually um, updates every two weeks. So when we have a winner of a challenge, they win a really, really neat BGC bag. So, good job, good job. Woo. Good, good job, job, good job. job. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. We hope you have a great day. Good job. Good job.